Hey everyone. In this video, I want to just go through some of the basics and use guidelines for availability zones. I see a lot of questions and comments around them that make me think a lot of people are not really understanding the key goal of availability zones. So let's sort all that out. As usual, this is useful. A like, subscribe, comment and share is appreciated and hit that bell icon. So we often talk about regions and regions all throughout the world. Um, there are maps where we can see all of the different regions. And what is a region? So we really can think about, well, the whole point of a region is it's multiple, typically, facilities within this kind of two millisecond latency envelope. So there could be multiple physical buildings that actually provide the various capacity that I'm using when I deploy things into that region. And then within these data centers, there's various clusters that are made up of multiple racks. You can think of each rack as a fault domain, has its own kind of power, networking switches. And through this, it provides those compute services, the storage services, etc. Now, when I think about resiliency within a region, well, at minimum, I want to make sure I have at least two instances of any service. And at minimum, I want them on different racks, different fault domains. And that was really the point of availability sets. But what about if there is a data center level issue? And so what was then enabled to us was availability zones. So in many regions today, we have this option of availability zones. And we can actually go and see that. So if I actually jump over to this web page, it will actually show us, let's go and look, click this link. And we can see these are all of the regions with availability zones. So there are a lot of them. Right now I can see in the Americas, in Europe, Africa, Asia Pacific, all of these support availability zones. Okay, great. What's an availability zone really then? So if I think about we have these unique physical environments, the whole point of an availability zone is isolation. And it's really isolation around power, cooling, and the network. So any kind of localized failure of those things, they should be different for each of the availability zones. If there was some localized power or calling or network issue, it would impact one availability zone, but not all of them. Now, obviously, if there was some big regional level problem like a flood, a natural disaster, hey, it might impact all of them regions are picked, the locations are picked within the region that have protection from kind of natural disasters, not on floodplains, etc. But things still happen. But the whole point of an availability zone is it's a isolation from power calling and networking of the other availability zones. Now, if I think about using that, I have subscriptions. So I could think about, hey, I have kind of subscription one. Now in my subscription one for a region that supports availability zones, I will kind of see three AZs. I'll see kind of an AZ1, an AZ2, and an AZ3. Now for this particular subscription, this could be mapped kind of like that. Now if I had a second subscription, let's say subscription two, it also would see three AZs for that same region that I'm kind of looking at right now, but its mapping could be that. I.e., is a lot, there is no building called AZ1 or AZ2 or AZ3. They are distinct, isolated facilities. And then within a subscription, there is a consistent mapping so AZ1 is always that building, AZ2, AZ3. But there is no consistency between subscriptions. If you have a second subscription, it's AZ1 could be a completely different physical facility 
than your other subscriptions AZ1. And we can see these, so if I jump over for a second, and if I just go and actually say, hey, um, let's look at my virtual machines, and I'm gonna create a virtual machine, once we pick a region that does support availability zones, so here you can see East US does, so I see three availability zones kind of right here. I get to pick which AZ I want to put this in. Now, if I was to pick a region that doesn't support availability zones, um, I think North Central does not. No, it's availability zone is grayed out. I can't use them. I can just use availability sets, which will give me that option of having multiple physical racks available to me, and I can distribute them over those physical racks, but they are not independent data centers. So we have these availability zones. So it's all about isolation, power calling network. Availability zones do not give me any guarantee of distance between availability zones. I've heard people say, hey, there's 10 miles between them. That is likely not true. There is no guaranteed distance between avail availability zones. They're not a DR mechanism. It's strictly this isolation of power calling networking. Now, that region has a two millisecond latency envelope, so they could be distributed potentially miles apart, but they may be a couple of hundred yards apart. There is no distance guarantee between availability zones, so forget about that. It is also not a proximity guarantee, i.e., if I put two VMs in the same availability zone, they're not actually guaranteed to be super close together. I'm drawing an availability zone as a building, but potentially it could be multiple facilities make up an availability zone. If I want proximity, so remember proximity, I, I want things to be close together, well that's a proximity placement group. That's a separate construct. I would create a proximity placement group and then that would get pinned potentially to an AZ when I put the first resource in it. But an availability zone is not a proximity guarantee. Now, chances are it's gonna be closer than just randomly putting things in a region, but that is not what it's all about. Now also, when I think about using availability zones, I had someone say the other day, hey, if I put things in availability zone, does that increase its resilience? No. Think about, you always say, don't put all your eggs in one basket. So the whole idea is, hey, I want multiple baskets, so, I can spread my eggs over multiple baskets. If I drop a basket, well, I've still got eggs in my remaining baskets and I can have breakfast. Well, if I had one egg, does having multiple baskets really help me? No. An availability zone is not some magical spell I cast to increase resiliency. If I just have one virtual machine created, like it's, let's say, created over here, I've not really done anything to improve its resiliency. The whole point of availability zones and improving the resiliency of my service is I would make sure I create instances in all three availability zones. Because now I've got my instances spread over those different physical facilities, which remember have that independent power calling and networking. So now in terms of a blast radius of something happening, hey, if there was a power issue or calling issue or networking, it should only impact one of those facilities, so two thirds of my workload would still be happily running. So that's the key point. To get benefit from availability zones, I need to have multiple instances spread over the availability zones. Now I can manually deploy VMs to AZ1, then AZ2, then AZ3. Services like virtual machine scale sets have kind of a zone redundant option that will automatically spread them over the availability zones. And then other things might sit on top of this like AKS worker nodes, etc., can benefit from doing that kind of automatic spreading for me. Now, what if I can only have one instance of a service? I said here that these don't really help you then. That's not strictly true. Remember, what is for a virtual machine, what we really care about is the stateful data. 
like what's on the disk. Now ordinarily, we create managed disks, and that managed disk, ordinarily, we would think about it as being a locally redundant storage. It's locally redundant, the three copies are all within the same AZ as the virtual machine. But there is now the option to create ZRS managed disks. So in that model, well I could actually create a managed disk that it's three copies of the data actually span across the three AZs. So this would be a ZRS managed disk. So now in a disaster of an availability zone, yes my VM would be down, but my disk would actually still exist because it has the other two copies of the data in the other two AZs. I could then recreate the VM connected to the existing storage. Another option, if I don't want to do kind of the ZRS or maybe that takes too long, is remember there's Azure Site Recovery. Now Azure Site Recovery is normally used to replicate a virtual machine from one region to another region for DR purposes. But it does also let you replicate to another AZ in the same region. So if I did have a single instance workload that I cannot have multiple instances of, another approach would absolutely be, hey, I've kind of got my VM here. I could use Azure Site Recovery to essentially replicate its storage to another availability zone. And then in the event of a disaster, then it could spin up the VM in the other zone. So there are things I can do if I can't have multiple instances. But really what we want as much as possible is I think about, hey, I want multiple instances of my service spread over the availability zones. Now do make sure you consider dependencies. Make sure you consider the entire solution. Think about, for example, if, if I do have multiple instances of virtual machines, it could be VM scale sets, could be uh, AKS work nodes, could be app service plans, which now support availability zones, could be an ACE v3, whatever it is, if I have multiple instances, most likely I have a load balancer in front of it. So you would make sure, hey, if I have some other service, make sure that service has the same or better resiliency. So if I had a load balancer in front of this, for example, well, I would make sure it's a standard load balancer and I'm using the zone redundant option. So now that load balancer basically exists across all three availability zones. So it's availability, hey, matches that of my actual backend workload. If I had a reliance on a database, I'd make sure the database is zone redundant. You get the idea. Don't introduce a single point of failure. Now there are some services that don't support zone redundancy. They're what we call zonal. They can be deployed to a zone, like NAT gateway. Well then you'd want to be really careful because virtual networks and subnets span the entire region. So a single subnet in a virtual network is available to all of the AZs. It's not pinned to a certain AZ. But if I use NAT gateway, well, if I deployed that zonally, I'd want to make sure I did kind of align subnets logically by the resources I put in it, aligned kind of to the AZs, so I'm not having some cross zone redundancy. Because again, I'm introducing a point of failure that I don't want. So that's kind of a key point. In terms of the services that do actually support availability zones, so here in this article, and I've got this in the description below, it tells us, hey, zone resilient services, and there are a lot of them. So these are all things I can deploy super easily and they will just be kind of zone redundant. So it will take care of a lot of the work for me to make sure it's resilient. So just look at this when I'm planning out my overall solution to make sure I'm not introducing some single point of failure. And then some services are just kind of global. Um, Azure AD, Traffic Manager, um, Front Door, for example, they're not pinned to a region anyway. So that's availability zones. And don't forget, this is really about high availability, not disaster recovery. Your actual solution, well, I should at least be using another region where maybe I'm using AZs and I have a workload there, maybe it's a failover, maybe it's a backup, maybe it's active-active, depends on my DR requirements and I'll do another video about that. But this is high availability. I use multiple regions for actually disaster recovery 
to give me that, that resilience against some region level natural disaster. And this is where I would have them hundreds of miles apart. The natural pairings of Azure regions are hundreds of miles apart. If I don't align to those pairings, still make sure you're not using regions next to each other. I still wanna make sure there's a big distance to make sure if there was some natural disaster, I'm not impacting all of the instances of my services that I've distributed among different regions. So that's it. Availability zones are isolation of power calling networking to actually get the benefit. I need to have multiple eggs so I can put them in my multiple baskets and make sure I don't introduce some single point of failure that is just in one zone or doesn't let me have that kind of zone redundancy. So I hope that was uh, useful. Until next time, take care.